hi there, Phil Rogers, Lauren Hall here from Low Market Edge, coming to another weekly wrap up. Uh, this week we thought we'd enjoy a little bit of the Queensland winter weather and uh, join you guys outside. So a couple of things we want to talk about this week is we're going to share a little bit of exciting news that's happening here as a team and, and I guess talk a little bit about some of the relaxations in the market which is exciting. Um, we want to talk a little bit about some really topical questions that we're getting at the moment and a lot of that is around things like job keeper, job seeker, um, the use of super when it comes to deposit, so all really relevant at the moment. Just want to unpack those a little bit, um, and we also want to talk about rate lock. You know, what is it? Um, how does it work? And, and what does it mean for you? So, um, Lauren, do you want to talk a little bit about the policy questions? Yeah, yeah, sure. So we can probably break that into three parts around what we knew prior to COVID or pre-COVID. So understanding the banks had a, a set of policy or criteria that they were looking for at that time. We're now in this temporary world of, of during COVID and, and understanding that uh, there's some different, um, what we say, elements or, or, or policies that are new that we need to work with, which is around the job keeper, the job seeker and, and also super as deposit. And then hopefully coming out the other side of COVID when uh, we expect things hopefully will turn, return back to normal. So at the moment during COVID, um, obviously things like job seeker, job keeper and this new super element, they're, they're just temporary or they're, they're really new. So the banks are trying to work through how they view that, um, whether they'll accept those types of incomes. So just being really important for us to be on the front foot and understand what we can do and where we can take clients in those areas. So job keeper, you'll have two parts to that. Either you're still working, okay, so the business you're working for is still operating um, and maybe your employer is topping up a portion of your income with JobKeeper. The other part is potentially you're working in an industry where uh, you're not actually going to work at the moment and your only source of income will be the 1500 or fortnight, which is JobKeeper. So the banks are different in how they'll view that. The good news is we do have banks that will accept the JobKeeper keep income, which is great. <laughs> Um, but it's really important to reach out and understand what those banks are for you and your obviously your unique position. Some will be very industry focused, some uh, require certainly deposit or, or equity to be able to use that type of income. So every bank is different and obviously every client's position is different. Job seeker is something that's similar I suppose to what we knew pre-COVID as new start. Yeah. That always had some uh, restrictions or limitations around how we could use that. There are very few banks that played in that space, and so that's going to be similar for Job Seeker. So, again, just to touch base so that we can run you through what those options would look like. And then the new one that we are getting a lot of inquiry, particularly this week, around is accessing super and can we use that as part of our deposit to purchase a property. So, the first piece in that is understanding there is some criteria around having an ability to access super and we need to understand then how that will affect our ability to borrow money. Okay, so really important to reach out prior to withdrawing any of that to understand how the banks are currently viewing that um, and how that would possibly affect your, your application or your ability to borrow. We hope obviously coming out of COVID, being that this is really temporary, that we will be able to return back to, to, to normal or what we knew before. Um, and obviously some of the, the great changes we've seen in the digital space we hope will continue because that's really making it a lot easier for us to, to work with the banks um, and, and get into property a lot quicker. Yeah, great. And, and it's been really positive to hear the feedback from the banks that a lot of these areas at the moment, the changes and, and movements they're making are very much temporary, you know, and they're outlining that and they're very for coming forward in, in saying that, which is great. So I think going back to that pre-COVID uh, time, what that's going to look like is things should return to normal, but I guess during this, it's making sure that we're sort of well inversed with what's happening and understanding it as Correct. best we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, want to talk a little bit about uh, some shares some great news as a team. So we've been nominated as a finalist um, for five awards. Um, it's Queensland State Awards, so Best Regional Broker, uh, Best Customer Service, uh, Young Professional, which may not have uh, been me, <laughs> the uh, newcomer and loan administrator. So really proud of the team and, and all of our efforts here. So really excited to see what happens there. Um, we did share in the ISO Awards, which is a loan market and Ray White initiative this week, which was a bit of fun. i nominated for two awards there. So it was throughout Australia and New Zealand, uh, virtually, of course. Um, but yeah, a lot of fun. Great to see that we can still celebrate the wins along the way. Um, also some good news, I guess as things are starting to relax a little bit, uh, we know the, the weekend sport of real estate open homes is uh, starting to slowly come back into play, which is a bit exciting. Um, 
obviously want to make sure we don't undo all the hard work we have done um, and understanding that there is a need to register your interest with a, a real estate agent or, or agency prior to doing that. We just want to make sure we adhere to the strict guidelines so we can slowly make our way out of this. So yeah, looking forward to things starting to return there in the real estate market as well. Um, want to talk a little bit about rate lock. So super topical at the moment. It's something that we would normally have a discussion with our clients about in any case whenever considering a fixed rate but just want to talk uh, more so now more than ever our rates are so low you know if we're talking about an owner occupied rate of 2.09 or 2.29 if we're talking about uh, fixed rates for investment loans of 2.49 or 2.69 we've got to be uh, you know, really careful of uh, how long we think this is going to stay where it is we've got to understand that there's a lot of conversations around the pressure on the cost of funds at the moment and how long we think those rates will will stay there. So I wanted to explain a little bit about, well, firstly, what is rate lock? So understanding with either a fixed or a variable rate, in the lead up to settlement, we will receive whatever the interest rate is on the day for either of those, uh, either the fixed or the variable. Now, the advantage we do have there is that the banks will allow you to lock in or guarantee the fixed rate. So when you do your loan offer, let's say at the moment at 2.29%, if rates were to move the day before settlement and they were to go to 2.79, we have an ability to guarantee that 2.29 from the beginning. So uh, obviously there's a cost involved and that's where we'll talk a client through um, the, I guess the, the cost versus the benefit analysis a little bit. So to put some context around that, if we had a $500,000 loan, if we were at 2.29%, if rates moved on the, you know, prior to, in the lead up to the day of settlement, and you were to receive 2.79%, which is half a percent, so 0.5, um, 50 basis points, that would shift your repayments by $2,500 per year. So effectively, you would be $7,500 worse off during the term on a three year fixed rate from 2.29 to 2.79. So just putting some context around, well, what does that actually mean for us as a household? What does that mean to our budget, to the numbers we've done? And is there a benefit of potentially paying a fee of $450 or $750 some banks will charge or a percentage of the loan amount, which might be 0.15%? You know, and we've got, to, we've got to really weigh that up um, to best understand how that works for your circumstances. So look, during this, you know, as we know, there's a lot of changes, there's a lot of movement. We're just encouraging you guys to, to get in touch. So let's have some really good discussions around a few of these topics in particular. I'm happy to help wherever we can. I'm really excited to see things starting to return a little bit to normal and, and looking forward to um, a few big months ahead. So uh, as always, get in touch with myself and Laura and the team. Happy to help and we look forward to talking with you next week. Bye for now. Bye.